Hello and welcome to another submarine chat. Like my previous chats, this is unscripted, but I have prepared some material, so let's get on with it. Today I'd like to talk about an aspect of submarine warfare which you don't see discussed very much, if at all. It's something that everyone takes for granted. Submarines today, like this Virginia class being built for the US Navy, are nothing like the submarines being built 100 years ago. A lot has moved on, but there is one aspect of submarines which has actually stayed the same for about 100 years since the 1920s, and that is the size of the torpedo tubes. Pretty much every submarine being built today for any Navy around the world, whether it's French, Russian, German, American, British, whatever, has the same size torpedo tubes. They're all equipped with 533 millimeter or 21 inch in Imperial torpedo tubes. And you'll see this on the specs of all the submarines and it doesn't matter where they are being built in the world, it's always the same. And it's been this way since about 1920. So let's explore why this is. Firstly, a quick shout out. This question was actually put to me by Marshall Frith and I thought that's a really good question. I'll investigate that, do a bit of research and do a video. I did ask a few people, among them Rachel Pauling, who is a naval architect and teaches naval architecture, and Ian Ballantyne, who's a submarine historian. So thank you to those guys for their patience. I think their answer was pretty much the same as mine though. So what is so special about this size of torpedo? The short answer is nothing. The reason that torpedoes are this size is because they have been that size since about 1920. And every submarine built has torpedo tubes designed to fit that size. So if you were to build a new torpedo, you'd be nuts to make it any other size. It's a circular reference. The torpedo tubes, the submarines are built to carry that torpedo because it's already in service. New torpedoes are the same size because they're designed to fit the submarines that are already been built for the old torpedo. So like I say, every submarine since the 1920s has had the same size torpedo tubes. Yeah. And all the torpedoes developed for submarines pretty much are 533 millimeter. And here there's only six countries, but also Japanese, German, Italian, South Korean, North Korean, even Chinese and so on. Everyone has the same size torpedoes. Let's look at the history a bit. The modern torpedo, as we know, it was designed by a guy called Robert Whitehead. He was actually asked to improve on a Croatian design for the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And the Croatians had come up with a concept for a torpedo. Unfortunately, not much information is available about that, but it had been designed by the time Whitehead was involved, but he rebuilt the design made something completely new, which we'd recognize as a torpedo. So the, the upper image here is Croatian. The lower one is Whitehead's first torpedo. It was an overnight success, as it were, and became dominant. For the first 40 odd years of torpedo sales, Whitehead was absolutely dominant to his death. But his earliest torpedoes were not 21 inches. They were actually mostly about 14 inches in diameter. So quite a bit smaller, but they did grow over time. And by the 1890s, 17.7 inches is predominant, both for Whitehead and many competitors. About that time, lots of people were trying to build torpedoes, many of them not very successful, but 17.7 inches became standard. That's 450 millimeters. You sometimes see it written as 18 inches. I think it's the same thing in most cases, just a rounding. However, by about 1910, quite a few builders were actually looking at 21 inches or what we'd now call 533 millimeter torpedoes. This is an American example from 1911, but there were other ones around that time. I haven't been able to pin down exactly who first went to that diameter of torpedo, but it was a natural evolution. And there were actually quite a few different torpedo sizes because when you designed your own torpedo, you pick the size and it was generally about 17.7 inches going up to about 21 inches. And size did make a difference. 
these are the specifications for two British torpedoes, both of them designed in 1912, both of them going aboard submarines in World War One. The smaller 18 inch or 450 millimeter Mark 8 torpedo, that's the one on the left, could run for about 2,500 yards at 35 knots. So quite fast, but quite short ranged. The Mark four which was a 21 inch torpedo designed about the same time could run for 8,000 yards at the same speed it also carried a much larger warhead 515 pounds versus 320 pounds so the slight increase in diameter of torpedo made a big difference in range and it made a big difference in the warhead that could be carried and that warhead made a difference to the impact that it had on the battlefield. The 21 inch torpedoes were able to attack and sink in some cases, armored warships such as battleships. For that reason mainly, I think people over time shifted towards the larger torpedoes. And from about 1920, every new submarine being built had 533 millimeter torpedo tubes. Let's talk about the exceptions, because I say every submarine. It's actually almost every submarine. There are always going to be exceptions to any rule. They're sometimes the interesting ones. So let's look at some of those exceptions through history. Firstly, let's get rid of uh, a, what I think is a popular misconception. You'll hear a lot about the Type 93 Long Lance Torpedo, which was Imperial Japan's premier torpedo and was considered extremely good. It was very long range, so it had a very big impact. It was larger than 21 inches, 6, 10 uh, millimeters versus 533 three millimeters. However, it wasn't actually carried by submarines. Instead, the related Type 95 was. This was somewhat similar, but it was smaller. It was 533 three millimeters. Back to the circular reference, it was designed to be carried by submarines, so it was the same size as the torpedo tubes being fitted to submarines. However, there were people building submarines with different sizes of torpedo tube. In particular, the French didn't get the memo. They continued to use both 400 and 550 millimeter torpedoes instead of 533 millimeter. And this is the Sirkauf, which is one of the greatest submarines ever built. Really fascinating. One of my cutaways, I draw these in MS Paint. You can find them on my website, hisutton.com. But this submarine is fascinating. One of the quirks of it is that it has mixed battery of both 400 and 550 millimeter torpedoes. Not entirely sure why or whether that makes sense, but that's what they did. Yeah. After World War II, the Soviets experimented with nuclear weapons and how they're going to deliver them. And one of their ideas was the T-15, a nuclear armed mega torpedo. This was ginormous, much, much larger than any 21 inch torpedo or any torpedo before it. Um, it was to be carried by the November class, which was gonna be the first nuclear powered submarines in the Soviet Navy. And you can see a schematic with the T-15 torpedo tube, a single tube dominating the front half of the submarine essentially. As it was, the Soviet Navy wasn't anything like as interested in that as the designers. And they actually wanted the submarine to have a regular torpedo armament, which is what was done. But it's a really interesting idea, very much a what if. The Soviets did, however, field larger torpedoes than 21 inches or 533 millimeters. The 650 millimeter torpedo was introduced in the 70s and it has a much larger range and a larger warhead than the 533 millimeter. So it's designed particularly for attacking high value service vessels, warships, you know, aircraft carriers, obviously. It's still in service and quite a few Russian nuclear powered submarines are equipped with this torpedo. However, it does come with a disadvantage, size. This is the Victor II, which I think is probably the first submarine to carry this weapon. It was equipped with four torpedo tubes for regular 533 five, five, three, three millimeter torpedoes. It could carry 18 of those torpedoes. 
It also had two tubes for the 650 millimeter, which is the larger one. They're in orange. It could only carry six of those weapons. So it was physically larger weapon, physically larger tube. You can carry fewer of them. Although these are still in service, currently, uh, current Russian submarines that are under construction do not have 650 millimeters. They seem to have stopped developing it. And future Russian submarines will only have the 533 millimeter, I suspect. The US Navy also nearly went down the same road. After the Soviets had introduced the 650 millimeter, it became an idea in the US Navy that they would also have to start fielding larger torpedoes. And they built the Seawolf's class submarine, which is in service today, with 26 inch torpedo tubes, that's 660 millimeters. However, the end of the Cold War was bad news for the Seawolf class, only three were built, and the torpedo development was stopped and the torpedoes were never fielded. So Seawolf class submarines are armed like every other submarine with five three three millimeter torpedoes in place they have to put a lining in to adjust down from the larger diameter but we can get really big by far the largest torpedo ever ever built in 2015 it was revealed that russia is again working on a super mega torpedo whatever you want to call it it's Known today as Poseidon, at the time it was known as Status 6 or Canyon, is nuclear powered and nuclear armed. And general reports put it at about 24 meters long by two meters diameter. I think it might actually be smaller than that, but either way, it's massive. It is not in the same class or category of weapon as any other torpedo. Think of it as a torpedo version of an intercontinental ballistic missile. Russia's building some submarines to carry this. It's a really interesting weapon. It's one-off. It's very different from anything else. The other exception we talked about, we should talk about smaller torpedoes. The Poseidon is a larger torpedo. Russian submarines during the Cold War were sometimes equipped with 400 millimeter torpedoes, typically in addition to 533 millimeters, so not instead of. These smaller weapons could be used against ships and so on. Really interesting. You can see here my cutaway of a Piranha class midget submarine. Above it, you've got two of the smaller weapons or systems that it can carry. One is a Sirena um, swimmer delivery vehicle. That is the same diameter as a regular torpedo, 533 millimeters. And then next to it, you've got the smaller 400 millimeter torpedo. So you can see how much smaller it is. It wasn't just Russia that was working on 400 millimeter torpedoes. Since the early Cold War, Sweden has been equipping its submarines with smaller 400 millimeter torpedoes. There's actually something very special about this. They're able to be double launched from a single torpedo tube. Because they're shorter, you can put them in tandem. They're both wire guided, so they can actually be shot from a single torpedo tube at the same time against two different targets. This is the Torped 47, which is the latest version, but they've had a whole series of these since the 1950s. Another torpedo that is much smaller than the 533 millimeter is being developed in America. This is the very lightweight torpedo. I think this is actually partly where the, direct, the future will go. These much smaller torpedoes will never be able to replace the 533 millimeter torpedo in the general sense, they're not equivalent. They're much smaller, they pack much less punch, and they're going to be shorter ranged. However, they have some advantages as well. Because they're so much smaller, you can carry many more of them and potentially put three, six, or, or more in a single torpedo tube. You could then fire them in salvo against incoming torpedoes, for example, and have a hard kill capability. Or, and this is the one that interests me more, I think, Torpedoes have become incredibly expensive. They always were expensive, but they're so expensive now that submarines will not engage low value targets. This could actually be a disadvantage sometimes. Back in World War II and, and around that time, submarines would surface and use their deck guns to engage low value targets. They can't do that anymore. 
they don't carry guns like that. I think these small torpedoes could actually be quite useful um, as a complement to the more expensive and larger 533 millimeter torpedoes. Talking more generally, I don't think 533 is going away anytime soon. The submarines being designed and built today will continue to have 533 millimeter torpedo tubes. Therefore, all the torpedoes will be 533 millimeters. Thank you for listening. Hopefully that was interesting. Like I say, this was unscripted and unedited, a bit rough in places, but if you like it, please subscribe, please share it. Um, and let me know what you think in the comments. Have, are there any interesting aspects of torpedo sizes that I haven't mentioned? Let me know if I've forgotten something. Thank you very much.